people's 42. Paramedic Richard Seneff arrived at Michael Jackson's home hoping to save a life. He needed to know how long Jackson hadn't been breathing, what, what if anything, used? he'd taken. Did you ask Dr. Murray how long the patient had been in this condition or how long the patient had been down? I did ask him that. What did Dr. Murray say in response to that question? It, uh, it just happened right when I called you. And in your mind, what did that mean? It meant to me that this was a patient that was somebody we had a really good chance of saving. True, if paramedics had the real story. Instead, Jackson's personal physician, Dr. Conrad Murray, told half-truths. What observations specifically did you make that led you to feel as if there was inconsistent information that you had received? When I first moved the patient, his uh, skin was very cool to the touch. Um, when we, I took a first glance at him, his uh, eyes were open, um, they were dry, and his pupils were dilated. Um, when I hooked up the EKG machine, it was uh, flatline. No heartbeat and skin cool to the touch told paramedics more than just the five minutes it took them to arrive had passed. Seneff says Murray was frantic. I asked what his underlying health condition was. He did not respond. I asked again what his underlying health condition was. He did not respond, and then he, I think it was the third time he said nothing, no, nothing, he has nothing. And simply that did not add up to me. Here's something else that didn't add up. Seneff says Jackson appeared thin, underweight. He also noticed an IV stand in the bedroom, an oxygen tank, and medications on the nightstand. Seneff asked Murray what drugs Jackson had taken. At that point, he said, uh, no, he's not taking anything. And then he followed that up with, I, I just gave him a little bit of lorazepam to, uh, to sleep. Did you follow up with anything else, Dr. Murray? Are you giving him, or did you give him anything else? I asked, was there anything else? Is there anything else? And no, that's it. Just a little bit of lorazepam. Paramedics would learn later that wasn't true. Dr. Murray had also given him propofol, which the coroner says caused his death. Did Dr. Murray ever mention to you having administered propofol to Michael Jackson? No, he did not. Did Conrad Murray ever mention the word propofol to you during the time that you were at the location or in his presence? No, he did not. The defense tried to ask if that would have made a difference. Isn't it true that you would have done absolutely nothing different because you could not, had Dr. Murray even mentioned the propofol? Objection. Lack of foundation. Cause for speculation. Sustained. Seneff says he saw no change in Jackson's condition from the time he got to the scene. At 12.57, more than 30 minutes after they arrived, emergency responders wanted to declare Michael Jackson dead. If there's nothing further, we are, we're going to call it here. Um, and, time of, and time of death is 12.57. But Seneff says Murray insisted Jackson be transported to the hospital and not declared dead. After loading him into the ambulance, Seneff says he went back inside to find Murray in the bedroom. Describe for me what you see Dr. Murray doing when you return to the bedroom. He has a bag in hand and he's picking up uh, items from the floor. Where is he located when you see him with the bag in his hand picking up items from the floor? Uh, near the nightstand. On the far side of the bed? On the far side of the bed. The defense warned against jumping to conclusions. Did you see what Dr. Murray was in fact picking up? I did not. Okay. Uh, isn't it true he was picking up his wallet and his glasses? I don't know, sir. The, the bed was blocking right where his hands were. Jackson was transported to the hospital with Dr. Conrad Murray in the ambulance at his side. He was pronounced dead upon arrival. Randy Kay, CNN, Los Angeles.